This video is going to be a quick guide on our AIO jellyfish tank, how it works, and how to set it up. So, what is this thing? It's a simple jellyfish tank that allows beginners to have a go at keeping jellyfish. It keeps them suspended in the water column, keeps them safe from getting stuck in any corners, and makes sure they don't get stuck into the filter. We created this tank because we wanted to make jellyfish keeping accessible, and most other commercial products seem to overcomplicate things, which can often intimidate beginners to the hobby. We've gone through many iterations of this tank, making changes and revisions to keep it simple but still effective at keeping jellyfish alive. So here is the tank. It's separated into three different sections. The jellyfish compartment, the jellies will live, the filtration compartment for the sponges and biomedia, and then the return pump compartment where the filtered water will be pumped back into the tank. It looks quite different from traditional jellyfish tanks, which are almost always circular or at least rounded, but this does the job just the same. Although the tank is more square shaped, it does still create the same flow pattern as the circular tanks do, thanks to the curved front edge and the spray bar, but more on that later. This is the filter compartment. This is where you will put your biomedia and your sponges to filter debris and house your colony of beneficial bacteria. On the front of this panel, you will see many slots across the whole panel. This is to create a large surface area for the filter intake as possible, so that the jellies don't get sucked into the filter compartment and then hurt or damaged. You will also see this lip at the top. This is to provide aeration of the water and also to spread the flow of the incoming water evenly over the sponges and ceramic rings. Thirdly, we have the return pump compartment. This is where your pump will sit and pump water back up this tube into the spray bar. This spray bar is important as it is what creates the even flow across the tank and keeps the jellies out of this back corner. If you need to attach a cooler into your system, you can do that too. Just connect the pump to the cooler and the output to this elbow. Finally, we have the light. This is designed to be attached to the back wall. However, on the larger 16 liter tank, I suggest attaching it to the black panel instead to get adequate light coverage across the whole tank. It's important to note that this light is not full spectrum. So if you're planning on keeping photosynthetic jellies, you will have to get a full spectrum light separately. Another cool feature I wanted to mention is the surface skimmer slot on the black panel. This is there so that any oil that accumulates on the surface is skimmed and also filtered out. This oil film isn't dangerous, but it's still a bit ugly and I think it's a cool addition to the tank design. Now let's set one up. I'm using the 8 liter variant. To start, rinse the ceramic media in some tap water so that any loose ceramic particles are washed off before adding to the tank. Make sure to saturate your sponges with water too. Water doesn't move very well through a dry sponge. With the filter media installed, you can now add the return pump. I suggest removing the plastic elbow from its slot and attaching it outside the tank. It's just easier than trying to do it inside the small compartment. Finally, you can attach the light. With the filtration system installed and the light on, you can now begin to add seawater to the main compartment. Keep adding water until the water level in the pump compartment is between the two lines. It's important to note that this will be the first compartment to run dry, so make sure to check on this water level back here occasionally. Now you can turn on the pump and adjust the flow rate. I would suggest to keep it on the lowest flow rate that will keep your jelly suspended, but don't be afraid to play around with this until you find the right setting for your jellies. Now you're off to the races, and you can let your tank start the nitrogen cycle. Once your tank is ready for jellies, you can acclimate them like you would any other fish. I personally prefer to drip acclimate them, with an airline tube and a restrictor. Just be careful not to trap any bubbles of air underneath the bells of the jellyfish as that can be dangerous. Just a quick word on maintenance. Everyone has their own style and preferences, but if this is your first time keeping underwater animals, I would suggest removing the jellies when you are servicing the tank so you don't have to worry about injuring them. Also, don't forget to remove uneaten food from the tank once the food has settled on the floor and it can no longer be eaten by the jellies. Removing it, before it decomposes, we'll keep the nitrates in the tank down and will mean you don't have to do as many water changes. In conclusion, I personally think that 70% of successful jellyfish keeping is about having the right tank for the job. And this tank has worked really well for us in the lab, and our hope is that you will have the same experience that we've had. I think this video covers all the things you need to get started, but please leave a comment if there's something I missed and I'll try to respond to you. So yeah, good luck, and I hope you guys will have lots of success with this tank.